Okay. Hi. I'm Kate. I'm Big Kate. I'm your herald. Um, the way this is planned to run is we're going to introduce our speakers here. Um, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end. And the plan is that when, if, if we run out of time for everyone to move from this space over to Wireless World, where they're running tech demos on site, and you can just carry on from there, okay? Right, this is, let's go through from the top. This okay. man here is Eric Blossom. Eric is a 20-year veteran of wireless design. He previously built the Star, the Star EM100 telephone security system. And the key point here is he's the founder and leading light of GNU Radio. On his left. Wow. <laughs> Nobody's throwing their underwear. You're hot. Yet. You're hot. I know. On the left is Mark Ettis. Matt. Ettis? Matt Ettis, yes. Matt, Matthew. Matthew Ettis. I do apologize. Matthew Ettis. He is the founder of Ettis Design. No, research. Um, um, he's worked in wireless design for nine years, has extensive experience in ASIC design. Um, for FPGA, um, for those who don't know, it's uh, field program or gate arrays. Um, he built and designed the Universal Software Radio Peripheral, um, and that retails about $700, or because we're in Europe, 700 euros. 500. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, just a quick introduction, because I really don't know much about GNU Radio, so this is new for me. Um, GNU Radio is a free software toolkit. Oh, you're stealing my slides. Sorry. GNU Radio is a free software toolkit GNU for learning. Sorry. Free free software. Software. <laughs> sorry. It's ah. okay. <laughs> sorry. You apologize. Yay! It's okay, really. We'll do great. Is it, I'm, I'm used to shouting yeah. to the whole room, you know? Yeah. Um, it's for learning about building, deploying, and you know, general software, software for getting the software to work. Sorry about this. Um, it generally is considered to run best on the universal software radio peripheral, built by Mark, Matt. Uh, which is small <laughs> FPGA baseboard, which creates software radios. Um, and there's a whole bunch of various add-ons for that. And I'm sure they're going to tell you a lot more about it because I'm completely at a mystery at this point. Okay. Um, and I'll be around to do the Q&A later, and I'll, what will happen is that you guys ask your question, and I'll probably repeat it, and then we hopefully, hopefully people can understand what I'm talking about. Bye. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Welcome, thanks uh, for being here. So who has actually used GNU Radio here? Just so we know who we're talking to. Okay, good. And who has seen some talk in the past about GNU Radio? Okay, good. All right. So um, Matt and I are going to kind of split the talk. Boy, that echo is a little weird. Okay, we're going to split the time up in the talking. I'm going to start with the GNU Radio part. And we'll give sort of the brief overview and then... Um, talk about some of the things that are currently already working and then the direction we're headed. And Matt's going to do likewise with uh, universal software radio peripheral. Um, and, and also afterwards, after the talk's done, we're in the big green tent in the wireless village. We'll do some demos. So we'll have people can gather around. We can show you what's actually happening. So uh, as Big Kate said, it's a free software toolkit. It, it's really like... Um, it's a big like foundation. You can, uh, if you're clever enough, you could build pretty much any real-time signal processing system. Mostly, we build radios, and what we mean by radio is anything having to do with RF. So this would be your regular kind of handy talky, walkie-talky thing. Um, it also could be garage door opener, but it could also be uh, uh, like a network for moving data, as well as like cellular thing or radar. So we mean radio in the, the, broadest, the broadest definition. 
the I guess that's it. The key is it's uh, under the GPL, and it's uh, no news to this group, but it's a big community effort. There's uh, about a thousand people on the mailing list, and uh, of course the number of active developers varies depending on the phase of Moon. But there's quite a few people, um, both sort of traditional hackers as well as a lot of academic users, plus some people from industry or various research labs. Okay, uh, this is the canonical software radio block diagram. The idea is that you have antenna, some kind of a front end, and this is a transmitter. This is your code, the DAC, the digital to analog converter. Some way we gotta get samples up to the antenna. And on the receive path, it's just the inverse. So analog to digital converter, and then uh, into your code. So there's, this code could be running in a field programmable gate array or a general purpose processor or some not so general purpose processor. Some people build them out of DSPs. We tend to focus on the general purpose processor and then some of the code runs in a field programmable gate array. Um, fundamentally, when we started with GNU Radio, we had this idea that we, it was a data flow architecture and that you had signal processing blocks that would do a particular operation. I mean, it could be very simple like add, but usually it's a higher level operation like do a kind of demodulation. And you wired these things together, uh, so they have a particular set of types and you can wire them together and kind of build this radio out of like little Legos that are wired up. Right now, it's currently in C++ and Python, which we really have liked. It means that you can do your performance-critical code that's actually executing at runtime and doing all the math is in C++, but you can string it all together with Python, which you know, is about one-fifth the number of lines of code you have to write to get the job done. Uh, we also have coming in our 3.2 release, uh, which is our second feature release downstream, we'll be able to do all C++. We have some embedded systems developers that are wanting a smaller, sort of a smaller package, easier to deploy. So they're, in the future, we'll be able to do all C++ for those who want to do that. And the platforms we run under, uh, the GNU Linux, the NetBSD, we've got pat some patches for FreeBSD, uh, OSX, and we have some support under MinGW and SigWin. So to give you an idea what GNU Radio looks like, I'll give you our version of Hello World, which uh, looks like this. And what it does is it basically produces a sound out of your, auto, your sound card on your PC that sounds like dial tone. The North, this case is the North American dial tone. And um, the point is you just create, there's a sine wave at 350 hertz, another one at 440 hertz. So I create these, I've got this sync, which is where they're gonna go to, which is my sound card, and then I just say connect them up. Connect source zero to the zero of the input of the destination and the other side to this, and I just say run. And that thing will run forever, and if we, if we could show it to you in the tent, it's not very exciting, but that's a complete Guinea radio program. Now, it's actually Python, and we just import, you know, from GNU radio, import GR, which is the guts of everything. And then we say import the appropriate audio module, you know, depending on your operating system and whether you like OSS or ALSA or Port Audio or Jack or whatever. Okay? This is what it really looks like with some, you know, Python command line uh, handling. So we've got these blocks. The blocks have a set of input streams and output streams. Some of them have like a zero inputs and only produce an output. That, for example, could be something that like reads from a file, like you got a test case you want to read out of a file and just play back. Or if you're recording information, or a lot of times what we'll use it for is we have syncs where we'll write to file like intermediate results in a radio, kind of like what's happening in this stage, what's happening in this stage. Um, we can, if you start thinking about signal processing, there's some very common cases where you have a block that runs at a, a fixed rate, that its input and its output are matched either one-to-one, -one, like I consume one sample, produce one sample, or I could be in decimating, where I like consume 10, I, cons I eat 10 samples to produce one, or the interpolating, the flip case. And we also handle the variable rate, which is really handy for doing things like uh, variable rate encoding, or there's sometimes when we're uh, 
we're watching a data stream on the air, but there's like only packets occur every now and then. So, you know, we only produce output when there's a packet there. Uh, this kind of who's using GNU Radio? I mean, uh, probably our biggest group of users right now are academic researchers. There's lots of people both uh, in the U.S. and in Europe, uh, as well as some other places that are, uh, lots of people are using GNU Radio mostly in wireless networking experiments and in cognitive radio. Um, we got industry people, DARPA, sort of a bunch of other government research groups, of course, hackers, which is kind of where we started. There are amateur radio people um, and radio astronomers. So we have a couple of radio astronomers who, who post these great things to our mailing list that says, look, I know most of you aren't radio astronomers, but let me show you this really cool thing. And you know, these people have built the, the, the home radio astronomy uh, observatory. And they're like, oh, this is the black hole at the center of the galaxy. We're like, great, really good. It's kind of like... The other, just a, sort of an anecdote, is sort of general strangeness. You know, you think you're building something, and then the radio astronomy guy, he can walk in front of his antenna and detect the black body radiation from your body that's in the 2.4 gigahertz band. So you think about, you've seen the charts and, you know, the black body radiator, the big tail. Well, I normally don't relate like that I'm radiating microwave radiation, but in fact we are. And you can, like, see it. I'm like, wow. Um, who ever knew? Uh, what are we doing? What are people doing with GNU Radio? Sort of transceivers, transmitters and receivers. The wireless networking people, a lot of work in that area. Ad hoc networks kind of a thing. There's some work being done in space-time adaptive processing or this adaptive beam forming where you basically want multiple antennas and you do a lot of math and you can either see things or get better resolution or transmit in a better direction. Cognitive radio I'll talk about in the next slide. Um, radar, both passive and, and active. I got a slide on this later. Geolocation is the, what they, that's when you're finding out where somebody is transmitting from. Um, Signet, that's the intercept business. The, oh, and the latest edition, I said, Matt, is there anything missing? He says, oh, muskrat tracking. This is like a rodent up in New York or something, right? Upstate New York, they got little wireless collars on them, and somehow there's a GNU radio tied in there somehow. No. So cognitive radio... Well, uh, nah, it was not. Um, a cognitive radio is from the academic and sort of government research point of view, one of the really big areas of research in general with wireless networking. This is the idea that you have a very flexible radio system, a software radio, and then the question is, what if the radio could adopt, uh, adapt on the fly to the changing conditions? So it could be the changing conditions in the RF spectrum. It could be changing conditions like your location. Am I rural? Am I urban? It could be changing conditions like what policy is currently in effect, like what country am I in? We'd have different, you know, we have the FCC. You guys have your PTTs or whatever. So there's, uh, you could think about this whole kind of multidimensional space. And the idea is that you would sort of the, the, the ideal situation is that these radios like find themselves and optimize their communications. Um, this also, there's a lot of interest in this from a regulatory point of view because traditionally radio spectrum allocation has been like split up into little bands. Like, you know, here's television, here's some television channels. Well, but here's radio, here's some radio channels. Here's cellular, here's some cellular channels. And this would allow people to like just look around and see is there unused spectrum and then can we just use that for a while until somebody else shows up. Uh, these are some of the players using it, some universities. And for those of you in the, in the wired networking world, there's a lot of people using it with this click modular router which came out of MIT. Um, uh, kind of a low level details for those of you who know something about radio, we've got this is what's working now. These are the kind of modulations and demodulations we can do. It's an 